have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right. So I recorded most of this footage on 2-6-2016. 2 I'm going to be working on the motor mounts. This is just a quick little time lapse of the motor mounts. These are with the new camera mounts. I actually have one for the uh, LCD screen there. And uh, couldn't quite get it working, but if I do it just right, I can actually get it to sort of green screen and uh, fade out. I forgot what you call that. Anyway, you can basically see straight through it and only the numbers are on the screen. That's pretty cool. Alright, well let's get started. I'll show you what I did. Okay, so here's the motor mount. Uh, basically, I got some cleanup to do. I am printing this on that build tech, so that's why it's got this finish on it. It seems to work pretty good. If you do it just right, I can get it off the build tech, but the plastic is... the PL, uh, This is uh, ABS, and it's it sticks almost too good still. So, I do have some squash out if you want to call it that on the bottom. So I'm going to be taking that off. So this is a deburring tool. Probably one of the most useful deburring tools that I have ever used. It's got a really, really sharp razor-like blade, but if you try to cut your finger with this, it's not very practical. It's not the same as a razor blade edge, but it is sharp. But it, you can run your finger across it and not get, it, not get cut. So the back comes off here. There are extra tips in here. You can buy spares, different types. There's sanding types and different carbide types and you know, for aluminum, for stainless. You can buy all sorts of different ends for this, but they do swivel in there. Um, the tip swivels in the end, which makes it nice for doing holes and stuff. It does come out, makes it extend. This way you can get inside of a deep hole or something like this. And uh, I really highly recommend looking these up. Um, there's the brand name on there. Basically, this is a slightly more expensive one, but you can buy like pocket versions. You can get like five of them for like, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I wouldn't use them for really heavy duty stuff. For, for plastics though, they'd work really good. Uh, the second one is my, my old school Sheffield knife. This is one of the first fold out um, razor blade knives like this. And I just, I've had these knives. I've had, I got two of them. That's the second one. The first one I used for almost 10 years. So those are the two tools of choice. So this one, I'm going to show you. See how nasty the end looks right there. So just, you got to, the, the deburring tool has an angle on it. If you go the opposite direction, it's not helpful, depending on what you're cutting, which angle you're cutting. So you got to go in the right direction. Now, you could turn the tool because it swivels, but I like to move the part. This allows me to give an equal pressure at all times across that guy. Um, I was cutting extremely deep here just to show you a visual, a really good visual, like how much you can take off. So you can see I went a little too deep. Uh, take it easy a little next time, Russ. Anyway, um, yeah, so we just knocked that out real quick. I did all the other little bitty holes, and um, I learned that going the wrong way doesn't work. Going the uh, correct way does because there's an angle on that uh, deburring tool. So watch this edge. You see the edge? Watch this. This is real time. Just peel this guy off. Just look how beautiful. One shot. If you try to do that with a razor blade, um, most likely you will not get a nice edge like this. You have to be really careful and go really slow to get a really good edge. So the deburring tool is not for every, for every application, but it really does work well if you know how to use it. It takes a little practice, but I highly highly recommend you go get one of these things. You can see it's not very easy to do on the edge. You see I went too deep, pushed too hard, and it's it's not really designed for corners and stuff. It's really designed for circles, um, straight edges. You know, you can use this thing when you're turning on the lathe and just pop it in there and burr the edge off. That's just, this, this is what I was using on the rollers, but I was using it in my hand. Um, that way I was just using the tip and I was barely touching it up. You can see I, I was really pushing hard here and I dug really far into the layers of the plastic. I should have took it a little easier. Um, but I was trying to make a good demonstration for you. <laughs> I really wanted you to see how good these things are. Highly recommended tool. So next we're going to actually like press fit this thing into a piece of uh, 8020 aluminum extrusion. 
So the edges are kind of sharp. You can see they're kind of sharp. I didn't deburr those edges. And that's because I wanted it to cut the plastic. So this is such a tight fit. I printed this with such good tolerance that you had to seriously get in there and press this guy in there. So working it in and out and pushing it one way then the other way back and forth um, basically it allowed it to be an extremely tight fit but enough so I could still, you can see the shavings there, enough so I could still move the part um, and actually have some freedom but at the same time I really wanted this to fit extremely tight. So I did that a few more times and really got it so it fit nice and smooth in there and you can see I can just push it in there now I can pull it all the way through I don't need any tools to do it earlier I had to use a screwdriver to get up on my hands and really get it out so that's that's working good so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some 832 set screws alright so again this is where the tap and die chart comes in okay so I got 832 and a drill bit which is 964 recommended drill bit all right, so you look up the, you just get online, look up tap drill chart, and you can find what you're looking for. There's the 832 standard tap. No big deal. Hansen brand, USA, baby. Anyway, so what I wanted to do here is drill these holes out, but I wanted to drill basically all the way through. So if you set your drill bit up, all right, here I'm checking it. See, I can drill all the way through. This saves you a lot of time for drilling the other side plus you know that you can get it nice and square so easy peasy all the way through a lot easier than drilling both sides because if you get it aligned right then you know it's aligned right because it goes all the way through at least it should be so knock those things out and this is about the time when I went out into the garage my wife said it was too loud. I was doing it in the oh, 10.30 at night or something like this, waking the kids up. So I've just got a glass of water here. Plastic and water on taps work really well. So just stick with water. Recommended solution for tapping plastic. Um, what I did here is I ran it in a little bit. Then I ran it back out. Then I dipped it into the water and got all the shavings off. Then I ran it back in. And then I ran it back out. I just repeated this process to about three times to get all the way through because what will happen is if you try to run this all the way through especially if it builds up heat you'll just run it straight on through and it'll just kill the threads it'll just rip them out complete waste of your time so I highly recommend taking it easy with plastic if it's thick if it was thin it was it's no big deal but when it's thick like this you gotta really take it easy because you'll just strip the threads out by pulling the plastic into it and back out and just just gnawing up the threads so take it easy alright so there I'm showing you basically the plastic on the end again you want to try to remove that before you thread it backwards because again you'll pull your threads out so plastics pretty forgiving but um, soft plastics are almost worse and then metals or steel usually just break your tap off and uh, aluminum will just ruin your threads so we just rip those guys out, get it done. Need to get it done. Biased. Ba da 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 da. You guys were singing that one last time, weren't you? I bet you were. Anyway, um, so I'm going to show you what it looks like here. If you just uh, look at my tap, full of junk. So I just bring it over here, dip it in the water and come back up it's nice and clean see how easy that is water does really good i highly recommend it so let's head back inside yep we're in the kitchen sink i actually just put this kitchen sink in anyway 400 grit sandpaper here um i'm basically using this to sort of just polish up any of those edges when you cut black plastic it leaves this white edge and if you sort of nicely rub it it will sort of turn black again so I'm wet sanding this guy in the sink of course um, and you don't have to run water constantly just get it wet so get it wet and sand it put it back so we'll just put the sandpaper right there no biggie let it dry so we're just gonna rinse this part off and see exactly what we got uh, I rinsed it off because I wanted to get the stuff out of the threads too because when you use water for tapping plastic it really leaves a lot of little bitty tiny pieces 
so I wanted to rinse those out. So as you can see, I didn't sand it to where it's like no man's land, but I did sort of just hit those edges, and it does look a lot better. Um, it's not perfect, but, you know, it looks a lot better. I just take the extra time to sand it. It's not a necessary thing to do. Yep, back at the table. Let me show you what those threads look like. So the top where I started to thread it isn't as nice looking because it just, that's what happens when you start tapping a hole. But if you look really closely in here, this turned out really good. These threads look very nice, very clean for this plastic. So when I printed it, I printed it solid so I could thread these with no big deal. Um, you can also make loops and then you have an extra little bit of plastic there to do the same thing I just showed you. So put the screws in there, the set screws, and uh, I usually flip the part around if it's small enough and hold the Allen wrench still, depending on what kind of Allen wrench I'm using. This particular Allen wrench is um, not the single Allen wrench part, so yeah, it's not as easy, but anyway. So I slipped this guy on here, and what I wanted to do is just give it a little test with a set screw. So you can see how nice they slip on there now after I uh, cleaned up all those edges and stuff. So I'm just going to like very lightly turn the set screw on here. And then I only did two according to this video, which I didn't even realize. I only set two of these. And I literally stood up on the end of it and forced every little bit of weight that I had on the end of this guy and see if it would move and it, it, it didn't budge. So I really only need two set screws in here, even though I had four total. Um, you know, whatever. The more the better, I guess. So I take it off so I can show you what this looks like. And even just a barely turning it, the aluminum is fairly soft and those set screws actually have cone shaped um, really sharp points. I don't know the technical name of that, but you can see how they just grabbed in a circle. So that allows them to grab nicely just beautiful absolutely beautiful completely satisfied with the way that those are holding so I really only need to set one on the back of each one of those so here's the motors I got these motors are the exact same motors that I have on the current 3d printer that I built uh, these are pretty f beefy uh, there's only one more higher I think these are um, 54 ounce let's see do 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 0.59 newton meters um, so basically there's one more above this in the same form factor NEMA 17 motors you can pause it there and read that if you'd like um, so I wanted that because I wanted to get as much as I could I was actually thinking about using um, that's a 20 tooth sprocket by the way there I was actually thinking about using a geared 5 5 to 1 geared motor so I could get a lot of torque out of these guys. But, man, I really just don't think I need it. These are pretty strong motors, um, considering uh, driving them even with a very minimal amount of power. They, they really do a good job on my other printer, so I just went with those. So, let's go ahead and put this thing together. Um, these are 3M, I believe 15 millimeter long 3M bolts. Just the right size. Of course, I engineered it to fit. Um, and little washer, slap this guy together, went together pretty well. Um, I don't think I had to ream these holes out. I test printed this a few times, uh, just the base, just to make sure the holes lined up. Uh, seems like that's the best thing to do is give it like two layers and just check the holes and make sure everything's good. So here it is assembled. The wires come out really nicely and then come through the channel because I plan on putting all the wires inside the channels. That's one of my criterias. I haven't told you guys yet, but I want to basically never see a wire on this entire unit. So wish me luck with that. I think I can achieve it, though. What's up, guys, girls? So today is actually one month after I shut that video, and I forgot to film what it looked like with the motors on the actual unit. So you get a little sneak peek. Lucky you. Today is March 7th. So here is uh, the motor mounts. I know my light, my lighting is terrible, but yeah, it mounted on there really nicely. Turned out really good. Let me turn this off. Yeah, that's not going to be beneficial. Anyway, so yeah, I'll give you a little sneak peek. I've actually gotten quite far with this thing, and the happy birthday sign's still up there. <laughs> I've been testing it with the caliper. The, Dial indicator, excuse me. 
anyway, if you guys are interested, make sure you check out the YouTube um, live stream for 3D printing. I've been doing a lot of testing on there. So, you can see how far I got. I'm pretty hard, far behind in videos, but let me know if you guys are enjoying this series and uh, enjoy the next one, working on the uh, belt tensioners. Okay, say it. Leave a comment, by the way. I want to know what you guys think. Later.